Hey yo, in this video I'm going to be talking about how trauma gets trapped in your body, how trauma energy gets stuck in your body. So I have another video called how to release trauma from your body which I made recently. If you haven't watched that one please go ahead check it out, I will link it at the end of this video. But these two videos are very closely related. In this one more specifically I want to talk about one of the mechanisms that trauma gets trapped in our bodies. And when you become aware of this mechanism you can work with it more and help release it more. I will also share with you this very simple practice that you can be begin to do right away to help you relieve some of this trapped trauma. Before I do get into the video I would like to welcome you to subscribe if you haven't already, share the content if you think it'll help someone out, this is such an important topic it will change your life and also if you do enjoy the content I really appreciate if you could like the video. Okay so without further ado let's get into this. How does trauma get trapped in your system or in your body? So the first thing you need to recognize is that when we are traumatized we have a, a natural instinct to constrict or contract our bodies. That's the basic gist of one of the mechanisms behind trap trauma. We constrict certain areas of our bodies, right? So I'm going to come back to this, but I wanted to give you that piece of information first. What I want to show you next is the different parts of our bodies and the different human capacities we have in each of these areas. And then therefore you'll be able to see what happens when we constrict in these different areas. So there's five areas in total. I'm going to use Bob here, the model, to show you each of these five areas. The first one is sexuality, right? Let's put on sexuality. In that pelvis region, you may have constrictions and blockages in this area. The next area is kind of your stomach region, which is associated to your power, aggression, getting stuff done, moving your life forward, that thing we obviously all want more of. And the next state we have is the chest area, which is your capacity to love, right? Obviously, the more open you are in your chest area, the greater capacity to connect with others and to build positive and loving relationships. Just above love as well, we've got the throat area. When we put throat. This is your ability to speak, speak out, share your truth, not being afraid to say what you are thinking and feeling, standing up for yourself. If you've been traumatized, you might not really feel like you've got a voice, right? You might be afraid to speak up. And then the fifth and final area is our head, our brain, which is obviously our intelligence. So I shared these five human capacities with you because these really make up our human nature. They're like gifts. Without these gifts in full capacity, without the full effect of these gifts, we can't live a fulfilling life, right? So when we get traumatized, like I said, we tend to constrict certain areas of our bodies, right? And we do this unconsciously. As we constrict these areas of our body, depending on what happened to you, we, we close down one of these areas, could be your head, your throat, your chest, your stomach, your sexuality, whatever, right? Because the trauma really is so overwhelming that it affects or hits us at a certain part of our physiology. Just to give you some examples on this, just some very broad general examples. Imagine if you were a very young child and you had a pet and you really loved the pet and the pet died, right, and it hurt so much. So you might have had a tendency to close your heart, right? Close this part because you, what you learned very early on was if I love, it hurts, right? So you constrict, you close your heart unconsciously. You don't know you're doing it because the experience of losing that pet was so overwhelming, right? That's just one example. A more extreme example could be maybe you um, wanted to love or connect with one of your parents and they didn't give you that back. So again, there's another way you might have closed. Just to give you some other examples on some of these, your sexuality. If you grew up somewhere where sexuality wasn't very much welcome or was a taboo, you might have unconsciously constricted in that area, right? And that can lead to all kinds of problems like addiction, sexual addiction and other issues. You've got this center, your power center. If you felt powerless in your life, maybe you were bullied growing up and you felt like you couldn't really do anything, you might have constricted this area, right? So you get the idea. We constrict when we experience something that's too overwhelming for us. And what happens in these constrictions is that we hold the trauma energy. So if you watch the other video, which I mentioned at the beginning, 
trauma energy um, we experience when we feel under some type of survival or some type of threat, right? We, we mobilize the fight or flight energies. And this is a very, very powerful energy. Now, if you don't if complete the process, if you don't complete that bodily reaction, that energy gets stuck in your body and it gets bound up in these contractions, right? So just to go a little bit deeper on these contractions is also something else you need to understand. These contractions really occur in your fascia, it's called F-A-S-C-I-A, it's like connective tissue that forms and runs throughout your whole body, it's internal, right? And we can unconsciously, without even knowing it, constrict or close the fascia of our bodies. And this will happen all over your torso, even in your head. So. Within the fascia that we've contracted, we've got the trauma energy, like I said, the unresolved survival response, the trauma energy gets stuck. We've got the emotion, probably some negative emotion that you experienced at the time of the trauma, and also probably the memory, right? This is why when you release trauma, you release energy, trauma energy, you release a negative emotion, and you probably might even experience the memory, or some old memory might return to you, and you might be thinking, why am I thinking this? This happens to me all the time, I'm always having old memories of stuff that I've completely forgotten about, and they just come out of nowhere. So that lets me know that I've processed something, something happened in the past that I'd completely forgotten about, but when the contraction is released from your body, all the energy that's associated with it from when it was first imprinted on you, becomes available for your conscious mind to, to process, right? So this is what's going on. Now, what I wanna show you next is how to work with these contractions. The first step always, for me, is awareness. You need to start to become aware of where you hold contractions or these constrictions in your body. So that means just becoming aware of times you might have a tendency to close. It might be in relationship with certain people, maybe a boss or someone at work or a friend, a family member, or maybe when someone says something, whatever it is, right? You need to become hyper aware of when you're constricting or closing down, or even when you're getting triggered. When you can begin to sense these with awareness, okay, I tend to close when I'm around a certain person, or I tend to get triggered around something, that's a huge clue for where you are potentially holding some of these constrictions right? And then the second step, we simply want to bring our awareness down into our physiology, down into our bodies, where these constrictions are, right? We want to do this in meditation. If you can do it when you're just out and about doing your daily tasks, that's great also. But the more you can bring your awareness to these constrictions, and the next time someone who would have usually caused you to close down shows up, you'll have enough awareness to kind of stay open, right? You will have embodied a part of yourself that you had kind of left in a sense, right? The constrictions are there because there's no consciousness there, there's no awareness there, right? The awareness has left, you've unconsciously closed the place down. Where that consciousness would have been in that area of your body is now just some old trauma energy, some negative emotions and maybe a memory, right? So when you open it up, consciousness now moves into these tight areas of your body. And literally, we've got to work with our whole bodies in this way. The good news is, as you release the constriction and the contractions from your body, you come back to yourself, right? You begin to reclaim your sexuality, your power, your loving capacity, your ability to speak out, your intelligence, you can think better, you can think more rationally, you've got more common sense. So all of these basic human capacities that so many of us don't have full access to return when we work with the constrictions within the body, right? And it's so simple to work with them. We just sit, feel the constrictions, feel into them with consciousness, and then make the conscious choice not to close anymore, right? And as we don't close anymore, we drop deeper into our bodies and we fall back into ourselves, right? So this is a practice that is not a quick fix, I'm not gonna lie. If you've had constrictions in certain areas of your body because of some deep trauma that happened to you when you were very young and you've had this for decades, I'm sorry to say, it's probably not going to release immediately. You might have a, a positive shift quite quickly, yeah? And you might feel good immediately, but it's probably a long-term thing. You may have to do it for months, potentially years, depending on how constricted and tight your body is. But the good news is, as I always say with this type of work, it's always progress, yeah? It might only be slight progress, but life just tends to get better and better and better, right? And you reclaim these capacities. So... 
Try to pay attention to the areas that you feel are tight, the areas that you tend to close in, the capacities you feel that you're lacking in. These are big clues. Begin to embody these parts of your body, bring your consciousness there, open them up and reclaim more of yourself, right? So we'll actually be making a lot more videos on trauma. I feel like this is just such a core piece of the spiritual and self-development journey. You can't evolve while you've got trauma in the system. You're just not gonna be able to, right? So the more you can clear this stuff, the more you're gonna evolve, the quicker you'll evolve, right? This has been huge for me, and that's why I wanna really delve into this deeper. I'm gonna make a separate playlist for trauma videos to really help you as well to kind of get over the past, right? This is so kind of intergenerational almost. One of the reasons as well I forgot to mention we hold on to so much trauma is not just because we constrict, is because we we mimic and mirror our parents. Okay, so if you had a mother who was tight in certain areas or constricted, you likely mirrored her, right? When we're growing up, we don't know who we are. We're just learning how to be, so we mirror our caregivers. And so this is how trauma gets passed down from generation to generation, intergener intergenerational trauma. Check it out. There's loads of research on this. So we mirror our traumatized caregivers, right? So we're immediately at a disadvantage. You might not have even had something very traumatic happen to you, but because you've mirrored your caregiver, your mother, your father, you probably got a traumatized system now. So you need to work with this over the long term because these constrictions you're holding within your body might be there from very, very early on in your life, yeah? But that is everything I have to talk about in a video. If you did enjoy it, if you could please go ahead, give it a like, share, subscribe. It really helps me out. Remember to check out my book if you haven't already. I'll put a link down below. But until next time, remember to keep living free and being free. Peace.